On September 2, 1998, the Boeing 717 took its very first flight. The jet was originally named the MD-95 as it was developed under McDonnell Douglas. However, with the company merging with Boeing in August 1997, the small, single-aisle jet would take on its new Boeing designation. And then, about 15 years and two weeks later, on September 16, 2013, Bombardier's C-Series CS-100 completed its maiden flight. Over in Brazil, the E-190E2 would take its maiden flight in May 2016, while the E-195E2 would first fly in March 2017. So, how do the latter, newer generation aircraft perform as replacements for the aging 717? We take a look in today's video. First off, it's notable that the 717 is still in service in various corners of the globe, including at Delta Airlines and Hawaiian. After a false farewell in October 2024, Qantas finally ended 717 operations in early 2025. According to its type certificate data sheet, the 717-200 has a maximum capacity of 134 passengers, or 138 if four crew members are included. Boeing's marketing material gives us a more realistic idea of capacity, indicating that an all-economy setup with 32-inch seat pitch would allow for 117 passengers. The CS-100, which has since been rebranded to be the Airbus A220-100, has a maximum passenger capacity of 127, or 130 if crew is included. This is according to the AASA Type Certificate Datasheet, accurate as of November 2024. Interestingly, Airbus's website lists maximum passenger seating to be 135. We're not really sure why this discrepancy exists. The E190E2 appears to be sized slightly smaller than the 717, while the E195 is slightly larger. The former has a single class capacity of 114 if configured with a 29-inch pitch. The latter can seat 146 with a 28-inch pitch. Rather strange and inconsistent conditions provided by Embraer, if you ask us. Nonetheless, under certain conditions, all of these jets can act as new generation replacements for the 717. Indeed, it's notable that the A220 is already being used to replace the 717. Delta had actually ordered them with the intention to update its fleet. As reported by Leeham News, before Bombardier would eventually win its case against hefty US government tariffs called for by Boeing, Delta's SVP of Supply Chain Management and Fleet Strategy at the time was quoted as saying, Boeing had no viable competitive alternatives to the CS-100. We were not even considering any new Boeing product as an alternative when we made the purchase that Boeing challenges in the petition. That same individual emphasized that the Boeing 737-700 was much larger than the CS-100 and that the closest that Boeing could offer was a combination of used aircraft, the Embraer E-190 and Boeing 717s. However, the 717s weren't available on the timeline Delta wanted. And so it's clear that some airlines see the CS-100, now A220-100, as a suitable replacement. As we've noted, their cabin sizes are similar despite all the different numbers being thrown around. If we look at Delta, which operates both aircraft types, it configures its 717s with 110 seats, 12 in first class, 20 in comfort plus, and 78 in main cabin. For the A220-100, there are 109 seats, 12 first, 15 comfort plus, and 82 main cabin. Both jets have a 2-2 layout in first class and a 2-3 layout for economy. The Embraer E-Jets are longer but slimmer, resulting in a 2-2 layout in economy. Performance-wise, a 15-plus year difference in technology can mean a lot. The A220-100's range is stated to be 3,600 nautical miles or about 6,670 kilometers. The E190E2 has a range of 2,850 nautical miles or 5,278 kilometers with a full passenger load. It's 2,600 nautical miles or 4,815 kilometers for the E195E2. 
This is notably further than the 2,055 nautical miles or 3,805 kilometers that the Boeing 717 is capable of with a full passenger payload. Just like range, takeoff field length can vary a lot depending on mission and associated fuel requirements, payload, weather conditions, altitude, and more. For the 717, its takeoff field length with a maximum payload is stated to be as little as 5,500 feet or 1,675 meters. Landing field lengths can be as short as 4,650 feet or 1,415 meters. We're not sure where airlines-inform.com is getting its figures, but this website says that the A220-100's takeoff field length is 1,500 meters or about 4,920 feet. Landing field length is listed as 1,350 meters or about 4,430 feet. Embraer's website notes that the E190-E2 can have a takeoff field length as short as 1,165 meters or 3,823 feet, it's 1,305 meters or 4,281 feet for the E195-E2. Landing field length is stated to be 1,215 meters or 3,987 feet for the E190 and 1,290 meters or 4,232 feet for the E195. And so, generally speaking, it appears that all of the newer generation aircraft are capable of operating from the same runways as the 717. The thrust of the engines powering the jets is actually somewhat comparable. Indeed, per Boeing marketing data, the 717 is powered by a pair of Rolls-Royce BR700 engines with a maximum thrust of 21,000 pound force. Meanwhile, EASA data notes that the Pratt & Whitney Pure Power PW1500G engines powering the A220-100 have a thrust of 21,970 pound force at takeoff. According to airporttechnology.com, the E190-E2 and E195-E2 are fitted with two PW1900G engines each, with each engine generating up to 22,000 pound force of thrust. And so it would appear that the old Boeing 717-200, or MD-95, has a few suitable options for its replacement. In terms of real-world actions, we've already mentioned how Delta has chosen the A220-100 to replace its 717s. For Qantas Group, its 717s have since been replaced by either older, first-generation, second-hand Embraer E-190s or brand-new Airbus A220-300s. The ultimate goal is to be more reliant on the A220-300s, but slow delivery times will inevitably see the Australian airline group lean on the Embraers for a few more years. In this case, we can see that Qantas Group has opted to mostly upgauge to a larger airframe to replace its 717s. The big question lingering now is how Hawaiian Airlines will replace its fleet of 19 717s. As noted by the website Beat of Hawaii, these workhorse planes have served the islands for a quarter century, but their time is running out. The website notes that a Hawaiian Airlines pilot recently estimated that they have five to six years left. Given backlogs and delivery times, it seems like Hawaiian and its parent company Alaska Airlines should be placing an order soon. But will it go with the Airbus A220 or one of the jets from Embraer's E2 family? With both aircraft types using similar engines from Pratt & Whitney, it looks like the airline group has some important decisions to make in the near future. But what are your thoughts on the best replacement for the 717? Share your thoughts by leaving a comment. Simple Flying publishes over 150 articles every week. If you're looking for the latest aviation news and insights, visit simpleflying.com.